Calvin, Cardovis, Broadus, Junior. Boy, you out of pocket. What you said to Miss Gail King. Now, I want you to take this blunt. I want you to puff, puff, pass, and sit your ass down. Let's talk about it. So as many of y'all may know, Gail King did an interview of Lisa Leslie, a pro ball player. Calvin got a little upset about what Gail asked the ball player, Lisa Leslie, and then responded in an inappropriate way. Let's watch the clips. While we watching these clips, I'm going to get my drink together, and then we'll talk about it. Which one did he sign? Oh, that one signed. For years, WNBA star Lisa Leslie has had Kobe Bryant's jersey on display in her home. But since his death, it's taken on a special meaning. He will be missed, but he will not be forgotten, that's for sure. They met when Bryant was only 18 years old, before his rookie season with the Los Angeles Lakers and Leslie's debut with the Sparks. The two quickly became rising stars in L.A. basketball and grew close. What do you remember about when you first met him? I would go to the house and he'd be like, Lise, Lise. I'm like, what? Lise, come here, come here, come here. Watch this, watch this. So he's always, he's watching Jordan videos. Michael Jordan videos? Michael Jordan. He's clicking the pause and look, 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 Lise, watch, watch. So he studied Michael Jordan? Beyond studied. I mean, he would like obsess over watching these videos. He imitated everything Jordan did. Like, if you watch Kobe's interviews, like the way he talks, the way he moves his mouth, when he licks his lips, when he puts his tongue out, when he played, everything was about Michael Jordan. And that's the player that meant everything to him. And he wanted to be great. Not good, but great, like Michael Jordan. When people say arrogant, aloof, that's not what you remember about him. I know it's so well, interesting. There is people arrogance. That, you know, there is arrogance. Absolutely. But the arrogance is not in <coughs> everyday life. The arrogance is in the world of basketball. On the basketball court, you're On saying? On the basketball court. No, you're not, you're not my friend and I'm not your friend. And it's either kill or be killed. I'm going to attack you. I'm going for the juggler at all times. What does Kobe's death, what does his loss mean to women's basketball? You know, he was really making change. Was he? Yes. He's How changing so? the mindsets of other men more than anybody else. He's giving us, he's validating us, if you will, these young ladies who are out there playing, the fact that he's enjoying and being entertained by great basketball. It made other men feel, I'm hoping, like, what is, what is this about? Like, this is, it, it's good. I've heard that sometimes he would spend more time at WNBA games now than he would at the Lakers games. True? Is that well, true? it's true, but I think it's also because Gigi wanted to see certain players and she was into it. And he talked about just, you know, I, I remember seeing him, he was like, Lise. She got it. She got it. You know, he was just like, she got it. It's tough, Lisa, looking at the pictures of him and Gigi together playing basketball, yeah. sitting on the sidelines. It really does take your heart and rip it out when I see those pictures. Yes. We know what Kobe's accomplished, but Gigi hadn't, she didn't have the full opportunity to do that because you just know that she she had the the, the mentality. Mama Cinta was going to make it. She was going to be in the WNBA. It's been, though, as his friend, you wouldn't see it. And that's possible. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just, I just don't, I just don't believe that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying things didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe that things didn't happen with force. Is it even a fair question to talk about it? 
considering he's no longer with us and that it was resolved? Or is it really part of his history? I think that the media should be more respectful um, at this time. It, it's like if you had questions about it, you've had many years to ask him that. I don't think it's something that we should keep hanging over his legacy. I mean, he went to it went to trial. Yeah, but the case, it was dismissed because the victim in the case refused to testify. So it was dismissed. And I think that that's how we should leave it. Gail King, out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? I swear to God, we the worst. We the fucking worst. We expect more from you, Gail. Don't you hang out with Oprah? Why y'all attacking us? We your people. You ain't coming after fucking Harvey Weinstein asking them dumbass questions. I get sick of y'all. I want to call you one. Is it okay if I call him one? Funky dog head bitch. How dare you try to tarnish my motherfucking homeboy's reputation, punk motherfucker. Respect the family and back off, bitch, before we come get you. I've been up reading the comments about the interview I did with Lisa Leslie about Kobe Bryant. And I know that if I had only seen the clip that you saw, I'd be extremely angry with me too. I am mortified. I'm embarrassed. And I am very angry. I didn't even know anything about it. I started getting calls. What the hell are you doing? Why did you say this? What is happening? I did not know what people are talking about. So I've been told, or I've been advised to say nothing. Just let it go. People will drag you. People will troll you. It'll be over in a couple of days. But that's not good enough for me. Because I really want people to understand what happened here and, and how I'm feeling about it. I reached out to Lisa because I know that she's a longtime friend of Kobe's to talk about his legacy and their friendship. We had a really wide ranging interview, talked about many things, his career, his passion, his sense of humor, the way he was mentoring other people, how he was starting his next chapter. It was wide ranging. And yes, we talked about that court case because that court case has also come up. And I wanted to get Lisa's take on it as a friend who knew him well, what she thought, where that should stand. And I thought she, <coughs> it was very powerful when she looked me in the eye as a member of the media to say it's time for the media to leave it alone and to back off. During the course of the interview, I asked follow up questions because I wanted to make sure that her position and perspective were very clear. And at the end, when she said, it's time for it, to leave it alone, I, as I said, I thought that was powerful. And I insisted, I insisted that that part be in the interview because I thought that it put a nice button on that part of the conversation. Um, when the interview aired, we got a great reaction to it. Um, I talked to Lisa last night. I believe that Lisa was okay with the interview. And I felt really good about the interview, really good about the interview. So for the network to take the most uh, salacious part when taken out of context and put it up online for people who didn't see the whole interview is very upsetting to me. And that's something I'm going to have to deal with with them. Uh, and we will, there will be a very uh, intense discussion about that. I also want to say this, I have, um, been with Kobe Bryant on many social occasions. Uh, he was very kind and very warm to me. And I felt that we had a friendly relationship. I too am mourning his loss, just like everybody else. I still am shocked by it. It's tragic and untimely. And the last thing I would want to do is disparage him at this particular time. And I, I, I hope people understand that. And that's why I'm taking this time to speak to you directly. I've never done one of these before. I didn't even, 
I've never done one of these before, but this was so important to me that I felt I had to say something. I don't want to sit up on a set and read a prepared remark. Uh, I wanted you to hear exactly where I'm coming from and how I'm feeling. And to let everybody know that no disrespect intended. And now I've got to go to work. Uh, I thank you for this. I've been up reading the comments. Here's a message for the people that need to know. I'm a nonviolent person. When I said what I said, I spoke for the people who felt like Gail was very disrespectful towards Kobe Bryant and his family. Now, with that being said, what I look like wants some harm to come to a 70-year-old woman. I was raised way better than that. I didn't want no harm to come to her and didn't threaten her. All I did was said, check it out. You out of pocket for what you're doing and we watching you. Have a little bit more respect for Vanessa, her babies, and Kobe Bryant's legacy. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to do what I got to keep doing. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. We're very nonviolent. We just want to say that first and foremost. We speak from the heart. Some of you who have no heart don't understand that. But anyway, carry on and enjoy your day. Y'all back already? We well, all saw the clips. Tell me what y'all think. As I get my gin and my juice together. Rolling down the street. Smoking in dough. Sipping on some gin and juice. So. First of all. Calvin, I'm going to need you to do a couple things for me. Three points in a poem and I'll be done. First thing I need you to do, Calvin, <clears throat> I'm going to need you to apologize for threatening Miss Gail King. You see, I understand that COVID's your homeboy. I get that. What Miss King, Gail King said offended you or not. Whether Gail King <coughs> was wrong or whether Miss Gail King was right. You had no right to threaten her. You had no right to call her out her name just because you disagreed with the question she asked. Now, was it too soon to be asking a question like that? Was it insensitive towards the family? Well, y'all can be the judge of that. But I don't care if it was insensitive or wasn't insensitive. Calvin, you had no right to call that woman out of her name. Calvin, you had no right to threaten that lady about you going to pull up. So the first thing I'm going to need you to do, Calvin, Cordova's broadest junior, I'm going to need you to apologize. I'm talking about a real apology to Gail for Thurner. That was wrong, boy. Next thing I'm going to need you to do, Calvin, point number two, is stop throwing out threats. First of all, it's a false threat because you ain't pulling up nowhere. You ain't no gangster. Calvin, you an entertainer. You ain't been on the streets of Long Beach or Compton <coughs> since you were 17, boy. You know how long that's been? You ain't no gangster. You ain't pulling up nowhere. What you gonna pull up? Pull up in your Rolls Royce with your security detail? You 
who ain't pulling up nowhere. So quit talking about somebody pulling up. Quit saying that kind of nonsense. You're a superstar. You got millions of people and fans who follow you. You got millions of dollars. What I'm afraid of Woo! It's getting a little hot in here. <laughs> what I'm afraid of, Calvin, is you're going to give a threat and some idiot's going to hear you and because you said it, then they're going to do something stupid against Gail because of your words. You got millions of followers, man. You can't be throwing out words like that loosely and threats like that loosely. Some idiot's going to follow your word and do something stupid. All because you said we're going to pull up on Gail King. That ain't right, boy. I can see if you were Suge Knight. I see a little resemblance. Suge Knight would pull up. Hell, Suge Knight did pull up. That's why Suge Knight is in prison for the rest of his life. Running somebody over with the truck because he pulled up. No, that ain't you, Snoop. You ain't a gangster. You're a rapper. You're an entertainer. Get on the stage and sing a song. But quit throwing out some false threats. That one, you ain't going to back up. One, you ain't going to back up. And two, some idiot's going to hear it and going to fool around and do something stupid because of something you said. Puff, puff, pass. Stop with the false threats. So I'm going to need you to, one, apologize to Gail King, a real apology. Two, I'm going to need you to stop throwing out these false threats. And the third thing I need you to do before you turn on your Twitter machine, your Instagram machine, and start running off at the mouth, you got personal assistants all over you. You got your publicist. You got your attorney. You got your PR team. Before you start running off at the mouth, Calvin Cordovis Rodas Jr., before you start running off at the mouth, I need you to clear what you're going to say with your publicist first. Now, that second statement you gave was the right statement to give. The second statement you said was what Gail King said was insensitive to the family. If you would have said your second statement first, then I wouldn't be here today getting off in your butt, Calvin. Cadorvis, Broadus, Junior, your second statement was the right statement. That's the statement you should have said at first. But no, you get all in your feelings, start running off at your mouth, and you're going to start throwing out some false threats about you're going to pull up on somebody. So before you start talking, clear it with your people, causing all that pain and suffering on Gail King and her best friend, Oprah Winfrey. And I'm not here to defend Gail King. Hell, I think it probably is too soon to be talking about what the boy did wrong. Everybody know what he did wrong. But I'm saying, Calvin, Cordovis, Broadus Jr. So first, first thing you need to do, I need you to apologize to Miss Gail King. Because you still ain't apologized to her. You was out of pocket saying you're going to pull up on that old lady. Pull up on that old lady and do what? Secondly, I need you to stop throwing around all these threats, these false threats. Negro, you ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to do nothing to nobody. Fool around, get your butt sued. That's what's going to happen. Take away money from your family and from your hoes. You better chill out. Thirdly, before you start running off at the mouth, Calvin, Cordovis, Broadus Jr., to have your PR team, your attorney, <clears throat> look over what you're going to say before you say it. Because if you would have said your second statement first instead of your first statement first, we wouldn't be having this problem.
On that note, Calvin, Cardovas, Broadus Jr., I'm going to need you to love yourself. I'm going to need you to be nice to others. I'm going to need you to live, laugh, and love. Ah. Some way, keep coming up with funky ass hits like every single day. May I kick a little something for the G's and make a few ends as I breeze through. Two in the morning and the party still jumping cause my mama ain't home. I got some freaks in the living room getting it on and they ain't leaving till six in the morning. In the morning. So what you gonna do? Hmm. I got a pocket full of rubbers and my homeboys do too. So turn off the lights and close the doors. But, but what? we don't love them no. Yeah. So we gon' blow a house to this. G's up, freeze up for a second now bounce to this. Everybody got their cups, but they ain't chipped in. Now these types of things happen all the time. You gotta get yours, but fool, I gotta get mine. See, everything is fine when you're listening to the DOG. I got the cultivating music that be captivating me. Who listens to the words that I speak as I take me a drink to the middle of the street?